Hello, my tooth to win part three, or you could look at it as a separate video about my new stropping techniques for convex and um, regular beveled edges. I hate VG1. This is so hard to work with. It took so much longer than doing the Azulas or working with the Bravo or anything else. VG1 is so hard to sharpen. But hopefully I can get it to pop some cord here. It isn't quite doing it yet. But anyways, um, this is my sharpening supplies I bought. And I don't mind telling you where I bought them. I have a general rule of not promoting any website or you know dealer or manufacturer. But this is a strop. I'm not reviewing the strop really. So I bought this, 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 and this all from sharpeningsupplies.com. And they gave me real good service. This is the biggest bench strop they have. Professional bench strop. I guess it's professional. This is the smallest, which I bought as a, to throw in the backpack. And uh, this one definitely works better for some reason. Yeah, this, this works better. Um, I also bought some of the old green, the micro, micro fine honing compound. The regular green stuff you see all the time. That works good for me. I tried this on a recommendation of one of my subscribers. It's uh, aluminum oxide powder. It's a, it's a white powder. Looks like talcum powder. And I can't get it to work for me. Not like the, I like the green stuff. This, I tend to just plow this around the strop with the blade. It doesn't, it, it, I can't get it to work like the green stuff. I'm, Unless he has some tips for me to get it to work, I'm sticking with the green stuff. Now with the green, what I do, how I've done this to put it on, go in one direction, putting it on the uh, straw. It doesn't take a lot of it, you just put some on until it's coated and not shiny. When it gets real shiny, it's time to put some more on or scrape some off if you got too much on. The way that I tell if I have too much on isn't by not seeing the leather underneath anymore. The way that I tell is by if it's not smooth anymore, if it's not flat, because you want a flat surface. And as you add more, it'll get hills and valleys, and you don't want that. So when you start to get kind of bumpy on the leather, it's time to take a cheapo junk knife like this one cheap old junk knife and uh, scrape it off. Don't scrape it like this, like cutting. Just scrape with the flat edge like this and scrape it off. It comes off easy, but you don't want to cut your leather, so just keep it upright. And scrape it off and then apply more. It's not hard to do. <clears throat> a little bit of a pain in the butt, but you don't have to apply the strop too much. Just the compound. Get a little more on here. Try to get it even. Alright. And you might have to start with, which I did. This is 600 grit sandpaper. And I just lay this on here. I already did that with this. It took forever to get this thing sharp. It isn't quite there yet. But uh, take 600 grit sandpaper and do the same motions with that, I use 600 grit. I guess anything in that neighborhood would work up to a thousand or so to get it close to stroppable and then use this. Now what I was doing wrong, to tell you how I was doing it wrong before, right? Let's grab another knife. What I used to do, aside from using a leather belt and no compound, the leather belt was too thick and soft so it didn't, this is firmer, it doesn't give as much and that's a good thing because you use lighter pressure. I was using too much pressure, using a leather belt, using no compound, so it took more stropping, which changed the contours of the edge. And uh, I was using a wrong technique. What I was doing was kind of pulling off the strop like this, my belt. I was holding the angle, get it so that you can't, so the bevel's flat, and then I'd pull it off the strop this way. That's wrong. I was doing it wrong. What I find is you should keep the blade on the strop and use a lot of arm motion to tilt it up. Because if I pull off right here, I've got a different angle at the tip. 
right? Because if you look at it, the angle sort of changed. It comes up like this, but if I go like this, now the angle's down here. I don't want to pull off. You, you stay on the strop and turn your whole arm up like this. Move your whole arm with it and rotate the blade staying on the strop to hit near the tip. Don't pull it off. And this is how you do, this is a beveled edge here, this isn't convex. This is how I do my new stropping of convex edges. Just stay on the strop, use a real strop, I use the green compound. Very, very, just the weight of the blade, I'm not pushing down at all. Just the weight of the blade. And that's it. It'll strop it right up to perfect. Of course, this knife was already perfect when I started, but that's how I do it now with double edges. Now with this edge, before I run out of time, the con convex edge, the way I do them, is I'll hold it way down, same motion, same motion in my arm, but I'll hold it way down at a low angle first. So I'm hitting and pushing more. I push down harder. I do that same motion every time, no matter what I'm stropping, convex or double, and pull back, right, and I'll do that both sides a lot. I'm not going to be able to do enough during this couple minutes like I should. You should do this for a little while, you know. You have to experiment and do it until you figure out, you know, how long to do each motion and whatever. But I would do this for a while, all right. And then, once I'm getting so it's close to sharp, but it's not perfect, right? Not, let's see if this cuts. Actually, yeah, it's pretty, I'm surprised actually. Pretty close. It doesn't take a lot of stropping with a good strop, good compound, put on flat and smooth like this. But to finish up, to get that hair popping perfection in the convex edge, I'll hold it. And this is, I don't see a lot of people doing. I hold it way up at, let me turn six, way up at an angle. Before I was at an angle like this doing it. Now I go double that, probably almost like 45, 35 degrees, and do it with not even the weight of the blade. Just barely, a little pressure, just touching the strop. And pull back. And then do it back the other way, not twice on one side. And then the other way. Just barely touching. Lots of arm motion. Remember to pull that up like that. Lots of arm. Just do this like three times. That's probably good, right? It was already popping cord. But that gives you the perfect, the perfection. Excellent. Excellent. So I did it. I convexed it. Like I said, I didn't quite get the convexing right here, this half inch, and right up at the tip. Because I kind of don't have time. I haven't had time lately to make as many videos as I'd like to. I might, I might even scale back a little more, unfortunately. I'm sorry to let you guys down that like my vids, but... My personal life is getting chaotic lately, and uh, I do what I can, you know. I just do what I can, and I'm um, glad you guys like them. It's cool seeing neat things that people are saying on the forums and stuff about me. It's uh, getting some good, good reviews of me, the reviews of the reviewers. <coughs> so that's my new stropping technique. This this thing I bought for. Um, I think it was $24. This one was $16 or $17. This stuff was about 8 bucks, which is a huge log of it. It lasts a long time. And I don't recommend this, but you could try it. It's only 5 bucks. I personally can't get it to work for me. But, you know, that's it. It's um, That's my new stropping technique and the way I've convexed edges on the Azulas and any other blade that's thick enough. So 
as long as it's thick enough you can get that convex you can do it with any knife but you won't have that super strong tip design <coughs> thank you guys bye